Hello, everybody. Welcome to War Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello, Scott Telford. Josh, a friend, a scoop dropped yesterday from Mr. Tom Warren over at The Verge, realizing, or revealing rather, I guess the rest of us realized, um, that the Xbox One systems were discontinued last year, and uh, Microsoft, in regards to which systems they're prioritizing, are now all in on Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X, although they didn't really seem to get that out in much of a public way. Yes, I mean, actually, Scott Telford, it was two years ago, nearly. It was 2020. That's how, I mean, no one knows what time is anymore. But yeah, uh, <laughs> The Verge reported that all of the Xbox, uh, previous gen Xbox consoles, you know, the Xbox One, the Xbox One X, the original mm -hmm. Xbox um, S, I think it was just called. Uh, yeah, they were all discontinued. My, uh, Microsoft stopped production on those in favor of the next gen Xbox Series S and the Xbox um, Series X. Mm -hmm. And The Verge points out that the reason that the consoles were discontinued was that the the company was kind of essentially able to replace them with the Series S. If you look over right. at Sony's camp, for instance, both uh, the PS5 Digital Edition and the PS5 Regular Disc Edition are still insanely impossible to get, and that's due to like the chip and component shortage that everyone is currently suffering with at the time. But Microsoft, with its Series S, was able to meet the demand and then exceed it, so that's always in stock. Like, if you look now, chances are that the Series S is going to be in stock. Mm -hmm. When everything else wasn't in stock, that was available. So, with that in mind, they were able to discontinue their previous consoles and replace it with the next-gen versions, which were just as cheap, and essentially stop having to worry about producing components for those older machines. I'll get to why Sony can't do that in a second, but yeah, that's essentially um, the reason. But this, of course... Um, was not the original plan, as I'm sure you uh, know, <laughs> judging on all of the comments from both Phil Spencer's camp and Jim Ryan's camp at the end well, of 2020. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. Like you said, it's, it started two years ago. They started discontinuing the Xbox One X, and then it was the whole the thing that Warren put out, I think, in the latest story was that all the other Xbox One systems have finally been discontinued altogether. But point being that they were phasing out their past generation stuff, which goes against... or you didn't, we, can kind of, we can talk about all this stuff. The way that, obviously, Phil Spencer, the way that Xbox advertised their uh, brand overall was that all the new titles would work up and down a family of Xboxes. Um, and they yeah. even talked about, you know, getting even the, the newest games might be able to be streamed on the older systems or whatever it is. Whatever system you want to get, we'll keep going, don't worry about it. And obviously they had a whole version of Halo Infinite that would work very well on Xbox One, and it does perform very well. Um, but this stuff points to what I would say is a very valid way to go about business, which is prioritizing yep. the newest systems and making sure that all your um, R&D and all your like literal resources go into the newest stuff. So I'm glad they did this. It's just kind of funny the way that it rolled out because you've got on the Sony side, like I said, if you go back across um, the last couple of years, Jim Ryan, we believe in generations, we're all in on the new PlayStation 5 and everything else going forward and then oh dear yeah. god actually we're not because xbox are backwards compatible and xbox are citing all this legacy stuff so we'll keep making ps4s and then the, one of their most recent statements is that they plan to make uh, one million more playstation 4s across the across 2022 whereas yes. xbox's thing has completely inverted and doubled down on the series s and the series x and phil spencer i think it was last year and um, said that he fully expects the series s to be the dominant platform overall going forward because it is just that affordable and they can do all the bundle yeah. deals with game pass and everything else so they've kind of inverted Inverted. And it's just it's just one of those business stories where it's like the way you guys roll stuff out. Um, you know, I get that it was right for the time, but that time is so short in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, totally. I mean, just going back to what you said initially about how this should be the way things work. Like, this is normally the way things work. Yes. Like, there's no real reason for Microsoft to keep producing those older machines when they have effectively been replaced, especially by the Series S, which, which is just as affordable and is obviously a big jump in quality. Just because they've discontinued production doesn't mean they're not going to support the Xbox M1 or the Xbox mm. uh, One X anymore. It's just that that's not where their focus is in manufacturing. And obviously, they with the chip shortage, they need to make sure their focus is on the newer machines. Why this is interesting is because of what you said there with Jim Ryan, who initially came out and said he believed in generations. And now Sony, due to the pandemic, due to the chip shortage, has been forced to take a completely different approach to how they are manufacturing their machines. The Verge piece actually links to a Bloomberg piece all about um, Sony's plans for this coming year when it comes to PS5 and PS4. As you said, um, According to the Bloomberg report, they have committed to 1 million more PS4s being made in 2022. Um, mm -hmm. And that's in part to keep manufacturers sweet so they have, you know, things actually in production so they're keeping their partners oiled with money and stuff. But according to that report, it's also because the PS5 is still piss hard to make. Like, it's still <laughs> really difficult to find the components for it, both um, the digital version and the regular disc version. And it's because Sony doesn't have the kind of 
two different um, levels of next-gen yep. machine. You know, they've just got the PS5, whereas see, the Series S is much easier to produce and much more affordable to um, produce. To quote something from the piece, uh, they write that, quote, extending PS4 availability is seen within the company as a means to fill a supply vacuum and keep gamers within the PlayStation ecosystem because they literally can't keep up with the demand. Like, they can't no. supplant the PS4 at this stage with the PS5 because everyone will be fewer that they can't buy it and they don't have the install base there like they can't make that switch yet which again like you said is sucks and feels jarring because Jim Ryan was initially saying we were going to believe in generations and apparently yes. according to this Bloomberg report the plan was to stop production of PS4s in 2021 but when it became clear that they wouldn't get the parts to make or meet demand for PS5s they were like right we need something let's keep making this stuff and that does have a knock-on effect mm -hmm. I presume and it's probably again this is this is me rather than the report but it's probably part of the reason why we're seeing so many cross-generation yes. titles and why we're seeing stuff like Gran Turismo 7 initially going to be a uh, PS5 game and then kind of at the last minute have it be a cross-gen on PS4 uh, release. Yeah, man. Well, that was the thing I was going to say, because I feel like a lot of this stuff, the cross-gen stuff, it's 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 hard lining that up with the reality of, like you said, there's the chip shortage stuff, which they would have been analyzing across most of last year, and just the, you know dealing with all the different things that come from the pandemic and the hardware side of it and the resource management stuff. There's all that. But then there's also the stuff that came out about Horizon, where it was always planned to be a cross-platform game. And obviously, God of War yeah. became cross-platform over time. Gran Turismo got added on. So some of this stuff feels like they're kind of rolling with the punches and just being like, well, these top-tier games that were going to be the reason you will buy a PlayStation 5, we can actually make them work on a PlayStation 4 and we can do more with that hardware overall anyway, um, which is kind of just an interesting thing. It means that the generation overall has a like even more of a, a delayed start, let's say, because for example, mm -hmm. um, we talked about this on the podcast, go subscribe to the What Culture Gaming podcast. One of the things we talked about was that the Matrix Awakens Unreal 5 demo is such a um, you know visual spectacle. It's such a demonstration of what next generation tech can look like and feel like. Um, and that's something that, you know, obviously isn't the norm yet. And like that, but is like, yeah. that is potentially indicative of what the next generation should be. And so it'll be interesting to see how God of War and Horizon and Gran Turismo, whatever else goes down for the rest of this year. And um, when they're almost just sort of, they're arbitrary releases at this point, they're not full on P reasons to get a PS5. They have smoother frame rates or whatever, but I'm sure one of the creative directors or the creative director for Horizon said that the main difference between the PS4 one and the PS5 is essentially LOD. It's, le you know, it's level of detail, it's mm -hmm. distance stuff. Um, it's not a fundamental, you know, like difference in the way that something like the old school Splinter Cell Double Agent was when it was on the original Xbox or on the 360. And so all these things I just think are fascinating in regards to what a new generation even is and the different yes. realities of business that they've kind of just had to roll with. Um, it does make sense though to, um, on the Sony side, to sort of like try and supplant the, uh, the audience. But obviously on the Xbox side, they're just realizing, looking at the data, that hardly anybody was buying the Xbox One anyway. And yeah. I I know that the whole thing for this is that if you bring in the Xbox One X, that was the first one they discontinued, like you said, in 2020. Um, and that's one of the ones that was the most confusing system out there um, to new buyers. There was a whole story back at launch from the, when the series system launched that people were buying yes. Xbox One Xs instead. Um, and there was that whole meme of like one Xbox One X box and like that, <laughs> the whole thing of trying to categorize what these different systems are. So I do like that they, on the Xbox side, are finally just saying we have two SKUs and that's what we have. Yeah. It's either the top tier premium one or it's the super affordable one and that's it. I mean, it's, it's funny, like, looking back at it, when the Xbox Series S was announced, everyone was kind of like, well, wh why do we need this? Like, why is this being made? Mm -hmm. And now, whether they intended this or not, I mean, they couldn't have foreseen a pandemic and then, you know, no. a big major chip <laughs> bottleneck coming. But it's, it's, it's worked out for them in, in that sense, in the manufacturing sense, that they are able to produce this cheaper and keep up with demand and kind of move the generation on quicker than the competition whose entire original point was that they were going to move the generations <laughs> on really quick. Uh, it, it, it does admittedly make me um, kind of more sympathetic to Jim Ryan's initial comments and how we kind of, you know, ribbed him a little bit over them about how we had to like, go back on those plans and then suddenly had all these cross-generation games. It's becoming increasingly clear that that probably wasn't a kind of their initial decision, their initial plan, and nope. in that they have been forced by all of these uh, different circumstances. So it does make me more sympathetic to that because they literally can't do anything about the no. PS5 shortage issue, just like Microsoft can't do anything about the Series X shortage issue. 
Yeah, and like I said, like just continuing the the One X, that was the system where if you lined up all the the, the actual hardware performance of it, it wasn't that far. It was like it sat yes. amongst the the uh, the Series S and the Series X, and it was this whole conversation around like, well, if you want to save money, maybe just go get a One X and wait it out. And obviously, they tried to they've managed to solve that one way or the other, whether it's just literally through their higher hand being forced. But yeah, going forward, uh, it seems like 2022 might be another sort of let's wait and see type. Yeah, not that we're gonna not not that we're not gonna get incredible games. Um, but I think that Microsoft is very much planning for a, a future of, you know, they've bought all these new IP, they've bought all these new uh, developers, the likes of Bethesda, set them to work on making something that only works on a series system. And then, you know, they have all their new first party IP that works on the newest hardware. And that's the reason to buy into Xbox. That seems to be the, yeah. the, the thing that they're going to be doing in the next few years. Um, I don't, I'd be amazed if any of that really comes to fruition this year. I know we're going to get Starfield, um, which will be another title that's supposed to work up and down the family of Xboxes. But going forward, it seems like it will be all in on new systems. Systems, um, but probably not for the rest of this year. Yeah, totally. I mean, I feel like it's going to be another year, like you said, of kind of waiting and see. Like you said, there are still great games coming, but those mm. real next-gen experiences are going to continue being few and far between, just like they were um, in 2021. Mm -hmm. But it's all right, because we've got Sifu. I know it's an Xbox video, but <laughs> Sifu's coming do. out, mate. Sifu and Starfield to the rescue. Let us know what you think <laughs> down in the comments below of the state of Xbox and the, the, the fact that they discontinued the old Xbox One systems. What do you think of that generation overall? And is that a mistake for them as a company? Or should they just focus on the series stuff going forward? For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. I've been Josh from WhatCulture.com. And we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.